What's up, Covalence friends? Today, we're gonna start a new series on common JavaScript mistakes that I see over and over and over again. This particular one's gonna be on event targets, and we're gonna get right into it, so I'm not gonna waste any more time. All right, so we're starting off with a very simple repo. We just have our index.html. It's super simple, basically the standardized template with a div inside the body. That div contains a button. That button contains a span that has text in it. And we have our script tag as well that's referencing our app.js. And we're also referencing our app.css, obviously. So we're applying a few styles here, nothing crazy. We're just basically going to make it so that it looks good. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it looks good enough. It looks a little bit better to kind of demonstrate my point. So basically, we have, we're taking away margin padding from the body. We've centered the button and we've added some padding to kind of just bring it down a little bit. We have our button that we've just made larger. So we're still using the standard uh, browser default settings for a button. So nothing crazy there. But what we want to do is we have this clicked class that we're going to be able to add to something where we want to basically just change the background color and we can get rid of that border color. But we're going to change the background color. We're going to change the color. So basically, Hopefully the default button, which in almost every browser is going to be kind of like a gray color with black text, we're going to kind of just invert that a little bit. So we're going to do the background color black and we're going to make the color of the text white. So if we open up our app.js, we have our immediately executing function here. And that's just to kind of wrap this var button that we've created so that it doesn't get put on the global scope. And so this button here, we're just getting it by ID, which we've applied just that's just BTN there. So we're getting that element and then we're just gonna do a quick little check to make sure it exists. If, if it doesn't, we're gonna just log no button. We can check the console and we can figure out that, you know, we made some mistake, maybe we spelled this wrong. Um, otherwise, we know that this has to exist, right? Because we've put it in the DOM ourselves. All right, so the issue that I see a lot of the time is that people don't really know when they add event listeners. Now event listeners are pretty common, right? Everybody, everybody puts them, I mean, it's, you see them everywhere, right? So if we do btn.addEventListener and we put something like a click class, right? Because we're adding the click to the button and then we apply our function and we set our E and then we say false. Now, a lot of people, if they were going to apply a class here would by default, they would just sling out the e.target, right? So e.target.classList.add e and they're gonna say clicked. Right, so this is how a lot of people, and I mean, I see this, a lot of beginners make this mistake, um, and I see a ton of actually seasoned developers make this mistake as well, right? And so uh, they'll go in and they'll just immediately apply e.target at class list, and they'll, they'll add the class, and they're like, all right, perfect, done. And they sometimes won't even test it, right? So you wanna invert this color of the button, and let's just see what happens when we actually do this real quick, right? So let's go ahead, open up a browser real quick. All right, so we have this you know, empty page with the big hello world button in the middle here. Um, and we can pull up our elements here just to kind of show you. We have the button and then bam, we have the span. So what happens though when we click this is it doesn't invert the color of the button. It inverts just this little inner element. And that's because the target of our click is actually the span inside the button. Now, if we didn't include this span, all right, it would have worked fine because there wouldn't have been an element inside the button to click. But but target on the event is always going to be the actual target of the click, right? So it makes sense. Now, people might just say, why would you put a span on a button? Well, actually, this is pretty common, to be honest. A lot of the time, inside of a button, especially if you have buttons with icons, like if you're using Font Awesome or some other, you know, but or sorry, icon library, you'll put a button, you'll have an icon, you'll have a space, and then you'll have a span, right? Or maybe not a space, maybe just use margins. But it's fairly, fairly common to include icons and spans inside buttons. And so this is just one case, but this translates over to a whole slew of use cases that I've seen throughout. And I always find this error. And obviously, this is a very easy one to kind of spot because you click it and you're like, whoa, that's not what's supposed to happen. But you know, you should get used to understanding why and why this is happening and how to prevent it moving forward, right? Because when you write code, you should be able to write it pretty much correctly without even really, you know, going back and forth between testing the DOM, testing the code, right? So you should be able to kind of know what's going to happen and see your code and expect everything to happen the way that you're, you know, you're coding it to, do, to work. All right, so the issue here is that, 
you know, we're using e.target, right? You shouldn't be having to look through the DOM for the for the actual button that you're, you know, that you're clicking. And so what people don't realize is that when you add an event listener, when you're looking at this e, this this event that's being passed in here, e.target refers to the actual element being clicked. So if you actually put the event listener on something, it will bubble up, right? So we clicked we clicked the span the click actually fires on the span. If we were listening for the click on the span, it would fire, but then it bubbles up to the button and then it bubbles up to the parent div and then it bubbles up to the body, right? And so because of that, right, your e.target is still going to, in all of those functions, it's still going to refer to this span, all right? And so what you actually need to do is you need to change this to be current target. And what current target references is the actual element that the event listener is on. And so you know, no matter where you actually hit it in the DOM, so if I put the event listener on this div and we click this span, the current target is still gonna reference the div itself, right? And the reason why it's called current target, because I feel like a lot of people kind of misunderstand the nomenclature, it's because when, you're, when it's bubbling, that is where it's currently bubbled on, right? So when you're actually listening for this event on the button, the events bubbled up to the button and it is now the current target. All right. It's not the original target. So when we actually go back, we can pull up our page again, we can reload this. And when we click the span, it now does the whole button, right? So it now adds the click class to the button and we have our button inversion there. All right. So I hope you learned a little something now. Don't get me wrong, there's always gonna be a use case where you want the actual target, right? You might want the element that's actually being clicked, but a lot of the time people are actually wanting to reference the element that they put the event listener on. So if that's the case, use current target, not target. All right, so if you have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't checked out our merch site, make sure you check out the merch site, which can be seen in the description below or can be seen inside our Gravity Portal. Anyways, I'll see you soon.